All right, guys, so we're going to be talking about arrangement and doing a couple things to the said arrangement to make it flow a little bit better. Now, I've I kind of done this as I've gone a little bit because I'm always thinking about arrangement because it's an area that I I feel like I don't I'm not the strongest at. So I'm always kind of thinking in the back of my head, like, how can I, you know, how is this going to fit into the overall arrangement? Well, with the drums, what I did in the first verse is I actually copied and pasted the kick down to a new track for the first half of the of the uh, verse. And what we have there is we have t the same kick. It's just filtered differently with an EQ. So I took out all the highs of this one. So it lost its kind of punch. And the snare in the verse, in the first verse now, is filtered. The highs are filtered out. Okay. So what that does is it makes me have more simplistic options to make the second verse sound bigger than the first verse because it needs to coming out of the drop, the hook and the drop. So the second verse, I don't have a full transition for yet, but we'll do that before the last video here where we finish up. But we have coming out of the drop section. They say that the only... We now have the normal snare that's in the hook. It's just on its own track because it's a little bit more quiet. They say that the only way is up, but I'd rather be down drowning in your blue sea than politicking with the deity. No one else can get me so how I fit it when we you can see me. All right, and then I added a. <laughs> I did not mean to slow that. I added a, another pad to this to, to make it diff different and have it be differentiated from the first verse. Listen to this part. You got this, that I can feel. this part and the second one. No one else can get me so how I fit it well. Now, I don't know if this is something that the general listener will even be cogni cognizant of and be like, whoa, that pad that they added out panned out right. But it is something that I think helps keep the listener from developing ear fatigue as as quickly to the track so that's all that's really changed arrangement now we're gonna do something that i've never done for this breakdown we are going to use a new plugin called movement it just came out like two weeks ago it's made by output sounds the guys who've made a couple really cool uh, pl uh contact instruments now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my i have a i have the uh breakdown set to a whole track right here right i mean a whole track stack so what I want to do is I want to see if I can use movement to create movement and weird effects in the second breakdown to make it different than the first one because the first one's pretty cookie cutter. And I'm going to do that via touch automation. So we're going to go here, go touch. And now when I play this, if I hold down A while I play it, anything that I move in movement will uh, automatically be written to automation. And it has this really cool XY slider. So let's try this. See how that sounds. All right, that's actually really cool. So let's turn this on to read now. So I don't screw anything up. And you can see it wrote all those, all that automation in. And it's not going to do it on the acoustic guitar, it sounds like. It's just going to mainly do it on the synths. Let's see what it's doing on this track. Let's see what it's doing on this pad as well. All right, it's doing it on that pad, which is good. It's doing it on that. So it's doing it on some of the instruments. It's doing it on the bass, too. It is. All right, but collectively, it adds up to really dope. All 
right, so I really like that. I think it's actually pretty cool. Let's make sure it's not on the first one as well for some random weird reason. So of course it was on the the uh, first one. So what I had to do it, I had to bounce. I had to bounce that one, the first one that I didn't want the movement effect on. I had to bounce the audio. And then what I've done, I've actually been playing around with movement, and it's actually been the plugin that has brought the whole track together. So I feel very lucky that I put it on that track. I put it on the synth chords in the drop and in the hook, in the first drop. Let's listen to these real quick. So I have the two sounds that we've looked at multiple times. It's that lead sound coming from Synthmaster, and then the one coming from Serum. And right now I have an instance of movement doing this exact same sound on both of them. Now, for me personally, in my, well, my opinion, I think this that type of synth wobble for Future Bass fits this track a little bit more, and it's going to fit Luna's style a bit more because it's less of an EDM feel and more of... I mean, not EDM was the wrong word. That's more of like a flume style feel, less of like a um, like a poppy kind of track. So that's what we're trying to do there. So let me get these uh, markers out of the way real quick because I have markers going for the rest of the song. All right, so let's listen to this drop with movement on both of those synth chords. All right, so I'm just, as I'm listening to this right now, I'm just seeing how things are sitting volume-wise. I want that and the little sound to uh, be a little bit louder. Alright, we also have a drop now, and in this drop, what I did was, we already looked at this harp and this little uh, glitch sound. So it's arpeggiated. Now I have a Spire lead that I bounced to audio because Spire was being grumpy. That's left, right. And then we have this little vocal glitch. And we have a lead coming from ReFX Nexus. That's the lead that I wrote the melody on. And then we have, I'm using Exhale by Output. So Output sounds have been a very important part of this production. Uh, we have Exhale on here doing some vocal chops. So let's listen to this real quick. And then I've copied and pasted the white light for you section one more time through the do through the drop. So the drop's all done. I like where it is. It might need a little bit more mixing help with like compression and all that, but it's pretty much done. And then I also added this little transition because this was just a space. Now the thing I actually like about this song is I don't have a boatload of white sweat, like white noise swells and risers. It's it's kind of uh, it's lacking all that, but it's giving it a really cool feel because almost every EDM song does that. So with this, I wanted to keep it simple. So I just took and chopped this really cool tip and trick if you're ever struggling with transitions. I took the last little bit of the drop. Right? You can kind of hear that loop right there. Now imagine that looping over and over. Well, I looped it twice, and then I filtered out the high frequencies using a channel EQ, which will be automated. So let's watch that. They say that the and it flows back in the verse on a frequency and volume level for the second verse much nicer. All right, let's also look at one other thing I did was mess around with movement. Uh, I was like, why not? Let's throw movement on a sound in the verse, and I did. And we have movement right here. Great plugin. You guys should seriously consider purchasing it if you're looking into Future Bass. It is such a fun plugin, and it it, it is different than uh, Sugar Bites Effectrix. It just creates this subtle movement in your track. So I have this panned out left and right, or just right to the right, and you can hear it kind of flutter as it goes. It just fits this vibe of the track really well. All right, so then this breakdown has movement on. 
Okay. Now, I finished the arrangement of the track, and Luna is not around to record more vocals, so I had to get interesting with the bridge section. So coming out of the second drop... We have this uh, little vocal section coming out of it. Now, I want to try, let's try to get these in here as well. All right, so for the last drop, I was messing around with uh, actually getting those synth chords back in that we were dinking around with the entire time. So let's try that real quick. So I kind of like doing that, just changing up the last drop, giving a little bit of a different feel, really popular thing to do in a lot of genres of EDM outside, on, obviously with Future Bass, but even outside of Future Bass. So that is pretty much the track now, guys. We have everything pretty much done. I do want to preface this and say that I uh, need to throw in an intro here. And intros are usually the last thing I do. They say that there's no such Thing is fake, but I don't trust Much of anything that comes from Now that I can't see or touch But you got this that I can feel Because I like to see how the track feels before I do the intro They say all right, so let's actually, there's a little bit of a vocal thing to kind of get out of here. Get that out. That would be wrong altogether. All right, let's hear this. They say that there's no such thing as fate. So I think I want to keep things pretty simple for this track. Luna likes chill music. So I think for the intro, I'm just going to have a uh, filtered, literally like the introduction of the chord. So I'm bounce these to audio real quick. All right, so we muted that. Let's get an EQ on here. We're going to roll off everything here. All right, so I'm literally going to start with like an automation here. That'd be kind of cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to pop this into touch mode for the uh, automation mode. And it, touch will allow me to just move the fader or anything, the control in the plugin that I want. And we'll be able to do this in real time. So let's do this real quick. All right, so that sounds kind of cool. Let's listen to it. They say that there's no sight. Change it to read. So here's my intro. Really chill and relaxed. Kind of feels like a DJ intro in that it's like sliding into a song they on a set. They say that there's no sight. Thing is fake, but I do. All right, guys, so that really sums up this track, except for some few minor edits. This thing is pretty much done. Now, I want to thank you guys for watching this tutorial course. I hope you guys got a boatload of cool information. I hope you feel comfortable 
and feel invigorated with the idea of doing some future bass productions. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, post them up below and someone from Sonic Academy or myself will get back to you as soon as we can. Like I said at the beginning of this tutorial course, guys, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for checking this out. I'll see you guys next time. If you like this course, why not head over to sonicacademy.com where we have hundreds of complete track builds in every genre imaginable, including all the project files and samples. You'll also find tutorials on plugins and synths, mixing and mastering, over 250 tech tips, artist interviews, along with our award-winning plugins, samples and preset packs.